Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Let's start with, uh, I want to go back to 2016. And James Franklin was speaking with a group and he said, one of the more important things that we need to do across the board is we need to all pull the rope in the same direction. So that's what he told the I Grammy. Mean, I was there, when, you know, right, standing right next to him when he said it. Mm-hmm. And what a difference it has made. Did you get the same sense that that's what he was talking about with everything happening, right? There's no structure in college football right now. But yep. how important it is from top to bottom that at least in this institution, everybody pulls in the same direction? Yep. I don't think there's any doubt that that Wednesday was a it, it worked in two ways. One, it signaled that they're as close as they've been to having that. Yes. Right? Between the, the director of the board of trustees, mm-hmm. the new university president, who he said it's you know, obviously it's kinda at that initial stage of the interactions, but I think that certainly he signaled some optimism there that she will be um, you know, in line with that. Uh and then on down, right? All the way to, to the football coach but the second part is they're not there yet right like so it's it's still it's still a process um you know i think one of the things that was brought up during the season and you know kind of as the contract talks went along in october and november was this notion that if you look at if you look at all these other successful dominant programs in college football right now that is the commonality is that it is not just that that Alabama has a strong football program. Mm -hmm. It is that the university and the institution and the community at large surrounding Alabama football is all in. They all act. It it doesn't mean they they completely agree on everything or that uh, Nick Saban just points where to go when everybody follows along. But it's, it's simply to say that there are kind of these overwhelming pillars that provide a roadmap of, of, hey, this is the direction that the football program needs to go. And these people are all going to, um, you know, do what it takes and be invested in seeing that success come to fruition. Now, what makes his argument on this or his statement on this is very strong and as somebody who has stood there, I don't know, hundreds of times when he's done this, I mean, I'm not kidding now, hundreds of times, where he's up in front of his team stressing academics, that, I think, gives him additional cachet with the board, the president, and so forth, because he's stressing what the overall mission is on top of this. I don't think there's any question. Honestly, I, I, part of what he said on Wednesday that – struck me and I think has been really a part of the conversation throughout is, you know, kind of this notion that you can do all of these things that are happening without giving up your identity. Exactly. Without, without sacrificing who you are. Um, But, but does that mean that Penn state as an institution, as an athletic department and as a football program, shouldn't be finding the ways that it, and NIL and the transfer portal, what have you, that fit within that construct, right? And 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 to me, like that's that's the biggest. If that's the biggest thing, is just hey, uh, because academics are still important, because um, tradition is still important. How, how can they use those things to their advantage without selling out, without making it look like the program has transformed into something that it's not? You can you can keep those things in place uh, and, and build on it. Exactly. And, that, and when you have a head football coach that all the time, and I do mean all the time, is stressing the academic element to it, right? Doing that on his own. He's not, you know, there's nobody around. I mean, the board of trust, he's not, you know, the board isn't there when he's saying this. The president isn't there. The athletic director isn't there. You know, the vice president for intercollegiate athletics is not there. He's just doing it. Well, I happen to be there when he's doing it. So he means it. I mean, it's sincere. It's not a show. And I think that really helps the cachet of it. Now let's get to another part. 
in the uh, desire to keep life as amateur as possible in intercollegiate athletics, they made sure that nobody could buy any jerseys that had numbers on it. <laughs> I'm not I'm yep. talking about Penn State. I'm talking about anywhere. Hey, yep. we're going to sell number one. And, and for example, at Northwestern, it's Pat Fitzgerald's 51. All right. Yep. What about the possibility now that Penn State football jerseys may be available this this fall, and how may that work out in terms of the student athlete, but also for the university? Yes, I mean they obviously they teased it this morning as as a partnership that they've entered into with. This is like a massive thing. So this there is a deal with Fanatics, like the apparel um, company. That they don't make apparel, but they sell it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and all of these institutions, and so Penn State being part of that is a win, right? And and honestly, it's probably how the uh, you know the NCAA football video game will work, right. which is agreed. Players players have the opportunity to opt into um, you know this this larger deal, and if if they do, then their jersey can be sold, um, you know. It, I think it's kind of interesting and fascinating from a Penn State perspective in the sense that, you know, are, are fans going to order a player's jersey with the player's name on the back of it when that isn't what Penn State does as a football program, right? right? There are no names on the mm-hmm. back of the jersey. Right. Uh, but, but even that, right, like for many, 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 many years, Nike sold the star player's number, Right. Yeah. And just said it was like, oh, that's a coincidence. <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah, I, know. Like, I always love how, so, how this how this used to be. Although yeah. all, if you were uh, really smart a long time ago and you brought for, bought 14 for Chuck Fusina, it became Todd Blackledge. It became John Schaefer. Yeah. It became yeah. Sean Clifford. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, no, so that, you know, it, the, the fact that Penn State is part of that now and announce that, and that will come to fruition in the fall. I, I, what strikes me as so interesting about this is, is the day or two, right, after Caleb Williams signed and went to and enrolled at Southern Cal, right. they had on their team shop autographed footballs, autographed helmets that you could purchase from Caleb Williams. Right. So that's within the structure of Southern Cal football. Yep. That's that's the next day. Mm-hmm. That's two days later. Yep. Penn State's announcement today is for the fall, mm-hmm. right? And so, I, I mean, I think that there there is this, it's about expediency. It's about urgency. It's about all of those things. So, like, you have to make the decision in the first place to take these steps, but then you have to do it kind of quickly. And that's what I don't think has come to fruition yet for Penn State. Sometimes fall might mean June. Sure. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, yep. magazines for the seasons, right? The Athlon yep. and everybody else comes out May, June. Uh, so then we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that, that plays out. Uh, the other interesting part is USC is on, I think, the same academic timetable Penn State is. So I think they started classes January 10th, same time Penn State is. But Williams is in now. Yep. Uh, how important is that factor where – Look, we're going to get somebody. We want him in by spring practice, but he may not commit to us till February first. How important is is that concession to make, and you know, show a lot of confidence in your academic support group? Yeah, I mean, I think this is something that has happened, and you've seen with some other programs, particularly basketball, comes to mind for me, <laughs> where you know, admissions. And all of those things that are integral to the university yep. operations aren't necessarily set up to handle the way these things have changed in college athletics. Um, and so, no, I mean, I think he definitely pushed on Wednesday kind of the notion that, yeah, these, you know, <laughs> these things are not in place currently at Penn State. And it's just about making decisions to change that so that you can enroll in the middle of the semester or a couple of weeks into the semester, because there's no telling who or how many potential transfers may have precluded Penn State really from their options this winter, right? December and the beginning of January, because the academic calendar started so soon. Yeah. 
right. you know? I mean, it, it, there, there are all of these little small hurdles that Penn State just has to decide what it wants to be. Like, <laughs> is it going to cling to the model that has existed for all of these years because that's just the way it's done and the institution is prioritizing, hey, this is the way it is. We got to, like, that's it. Sorry, there's no wiggle room. Or are, is there going to be some flexibility here? Are we going to try to adapt to the rules as they've changed and figure out a way to make these things work? In part because, look, at the moment, I mean, the NCAA or, okay, college football, college basketball, right now is in need of structure because there isn't structure right now. So how do you adapt when there's no structure? That's, that, that's the question that has to be answered. Yeah, yep. well, and, and, and to what extent are you the ones who dream up how to do it, right? Like, so, so much of this is, hey, are, are you going to do the things that someone else is doing right these, these new frontiers mm-hmm. in nil and the transfer are, are you like that's the way that the question is asked is will you follow suit and i think that what james franklin is asking of everyone right players the university parents uh fans alumni is at what point do you stop thinking in terms of following and start thinking in terms of leading yeah. like <laughs> How do you set the roadmap? How do you, how do you behave and act to, to where other people are following you and but, following uh, your example? Right. There is, but, um, the, and that, but there's that line, though. And that line is, uh, I want to make sure we're doing this but not crossing the line. For sure. But right. I, I, don't, I don't think – and, I, I mean, I guess that's kind of my point is it's, it's demanding of minds – who can think in those terms of, hey, okay, there, there is no model necessarily for exactly what Penn State wants to be, right? I mean, uh, not that I'm putting it at this level, but I think the, the comps academically in terms of what Penn State wants to be are Michigan, Stanford to a certain extent, mm-hmm. for the athletic department as a whole, right? You mm-hmm. see these different institutions. Well, think about how you can maintain your identity as an institution, as a football program, as an athletics department, but still, but still push it, still, still, uh, you know, create new opportunities within the constructs that exist. Sir, outstanding job of how you did the interview while also controlling those two wonderful children who obviously were angels in the background. I abandoned them. I hope they're still alive. I raced up the stairs <laughs> and was out of breath mid-interview uh, because things were not going well. So I appreciate your patience. I, Thank you. I would have um, not admitted that. I would have taken the compliment. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> as, long, as long as my wife doesn't hear, and I'm assuming she's not listening, I think we'll be okay. I mean, the reach of this show is beyond your words. All right, so... <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Have a great weekend. All right. Thanks so much.